in this video, I kind of want to go over the CAD workflow that someone had mentioned and kind of helped me along with that I have found to be drastically easier than polygon modeling for hard surface. So this is obviously, if you know my channel, you know I'm more focused towards game assets, so that's what this is oriented for. So here's a receiver set that I made along with the buffer, and this is the low poly that I actually exported. And what I mean by that is I don't have any of the extra details, with the exception of the threads on the buffer tube, that I would normally have or want to bake with. And that's one of the great things that I really like about this software, or just I guess any CAD software, is you commonly will have some form of timeline that you can go through and make changes to kind of later down the road to don't just make this easy for the baking process. So... For example, and actually this goes for really all the changes as well, you can do those really at any point. So what I've done for the low poly, for example, I remove the grooving here for the magazine release, and I have removed a bunch of other stuff. So if I hide the bodies here, actually, no, that's part of the... Wait, which part is it? Well, I cannot fully... Re oh, yep, mag part of the mag release. So if I look at the mag release here and hide the magazine button, as you can see, there's no threads or anything like that and all that kind of stuff. So if I were to go ahead, there's the one I kind of use as a trace as well. If I go ahead and re-enable everything back to what would be the high poly, let me go ahead and do that. As you can see, we now have all that detail back. So the magazine button, again, has all of the ribbing. The dust cover has the threads, which I'm using to bake on as a uh, kind of to look as the spring. The bolt carrier now has all the notching for the forward assist, even though I have not modeled one on the receiver. We have the holes for the gas venting. We have actual proper holes for the pins. So as you can see, there's this was my attempt for baking but there is a hole here and then a pin that is driven through it and just that kind of stuff for the pistol grip we have the threads there and same thing for the handguard up here well actually this would be for the bolt for the barrel the barrel nut sorry i couldn't think of it for a second and same thing goes for the text and all that fun stuff on the side again the more detail and all that fun stuff and obviously, like I mentioned before, the threads on the magazine release, or the magazine catch. So that's how you can really alternate between the low and high poly very easily. Now, this is where you would come into another piece of software that has made this process drastically easier, because it does a very good job at cleanup. So if I go ahead and open it up in it, so let's say I went ahead and exported this model out with all the detail. Head over here, it's mall three, oh, control Z. Bring it back in. Let's see where the controls, yep, there we go. So basically the way this works is if we go ahead and save this out, I'll uh, just do an example, I'll save it as FBX. I don't want to overwrite, so I'll just do an example. And I'm not actually gonna save it. But as you can see, for the output, if I select ingons, we get a bunch of quads and ingons. And as you can see, the poly count has drastically been reduced. And you can see roughly the count up here gives you a pretty close representation. Actually, I think it might be exact. Uh, this isn't the actual triangle amount. So if we want to see that, we just change it to triangles only. And as you can see, we're roughly at 136,000 for the uh, entire set. But you can see this is now way more workable in Blender than it would have been as it just could have, would have came out normally completely triangulated and just a super, super dense mesh. So to give you a rough idea, this is kind of what it would look like. I set this guy to zero. It's probably going to take a little while. Yeah, we're over 3 million. Let's see, we're at 6,500,000 triangles. So as you can see, it is just super dense. Like it, it, there's nothing you can really do unless you go through and actually decimate it. So we would go through there and for the high poly, I just usually kind of leave it somewhere around six. 
and gives it fairly rounded edges for baking. As you can see, you can't really see any of the flat spots and the curves. You get some nice detail on the threads. Everything maintains its shape nicely. And if for whatever reason you need to make a change, like what I had to do with the fire selector, you can do so. And then I do the exact same thing for the low poly. So I guess I can go ahead and bring in the low here. And this one is going to be the exact same deal. Let's do X. And I'll usually leave this one around, in this case, about 15. So as you can see, we have a very clean mesh. Obviously, there's a little cleanup required, but it's not super dense. But it still looks really great for us without us having to do much work. And this in total has about 44,000 triangles. So that doesn't have any of the grooving any of the threads other than the buffer tube that we have to worry about. All that stuff would end up just getting baked on later. So once we have that, we would just export that on out and we could bring it right into Blender. Now here I just went ahead and duplicated everything and set it up and joined whatever parts I need to be joined. Uh, but here's where we would go through and bake. So here, for example, is the low poly. I have the bolt carrier, receivers, dust cover, and all that set up for the upper receiver. Have the magazine release, castle nut, buffer tube, and all that set for the low, or sorry, the lower receiver, and it's ready to go. So we have slightly lower detail here. We don't have any threads or anything like that, with the exception of the buffer tube. And we would organize it the same way with the high poly. So obviously you would go through and unwrap however you wish. So for example, my upper receiver contains the upper receiver, the bolt and the dust cover, those are all unwrapped together under the same material. And again, my lower is set up with everything else under the same material and unwrapped together. And if we look at the high poly, it's the exact same thing. The only difference is it's got all the detail in it, and still it looks really quite clean. I like the look of it. Everything came out really well. If we look at it, it comes with the harsh or the sharp edges already set up and everything like that. In my opinion, it just looks good overall and allows you to really kind of give a really good, I guess you would say, bang for your buck's not the right word, but amount of effort that you put in, you get a huge amount back, if that makes sense. Like you can really go through and you're going to have to go through and I've already actually triangulated this, so excuse the uh, the geometry there. And I haven't gone through and bothered to really do any cleanup either, but it really saves a lot of headache and a lot of time because regardless, you're most likely, unless you're just doing only a low poly, you're not doing the bait, you know, the normal high to low poly workflow, you're going to have to go through and do some sort of cleanup. There's not really getting around that. You're, you're kind of forced to, whether that's just cleaning up edge loops. If you're doing the subsurf workflow, then reducing that and doing whatever you need to there. Or if, especially if you're doing booleans, well, you got a lot to do. And that's another thing I like about Fusion. Booleans just flat out work. There's no finickiness. There's no tricks to happen to try to do small adjustments or get them clean. They just work. You don't have to worry about topology in the slightest. That will all come laughter. And the only thing that you have to worry about doing is making your model, making it accurate, and making it what you want. Once you get past that, just load it up into the software, export it out however you need, load it up in Blender, Maya, whatever, and just continue on from there. So yeah, I thought I'd go ahead and just make a quick little video on this to maybe give more people a reason to try this out because I think it is something that could be very beneficial for your workflow overall because I, as you know, am a programmer. I am not an artist. However, if you want, this might be slightly biased, if you want my opinion, I think this came out really well, especially considering this is my first, like, remotely decent sized project inside of Fusion. Like, this is my first CAD project, really, ever. And thanks to some online information, I was actually able to get some proper dimensions. So, realistically, thanks to the, uh, well, certain three letter group i'd have to remove that hole but this lower i could stick on and 
with the exception of some minor changes, such as the cut here for the magazine release, I could stick this on a 3D printer and print it away. <laughs> that's that's one of the things that I like about this is you can go, it's very, very easy to go based off blueprints and it's just set up for, it's set up for precise models. You can, you can just do everything you need to very well. But anyways, yeah, that's really all I can think of in terms of this. I highly suggest you try it out. It's, uh, if you're coming from a normal polygon modeling, it's a little bit hard to get your kind of head wrapped around it. At least it was for me working with sketches and then building off of those sketches that, uh, that, that took me quite a while to get the grasp of it. But now that I've gotten decent flow through it, I really, for hard service, I don't honestly see myself going back to blender unless it's something simple like a crate. And even then, honestly, I'd almost rather do that in fusion and just make the low poly and blender. So yeah, it's a very, very powerful workflow and I highly recommend you check it out. So that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a team deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to nearly all of my videos. And uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, my Discord is also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.